I'm really pumped to be up here on this day. When I think about Solve 7, I think about all of the fun we have on those big Sundays where we crowd the hallways and we serve. And, you know, for many reasons, we can't do that this year, but today is my best attempt at that. So you see all of the stuff in the hallway, you know something's up. So today I'm just thrilled to get to talk to you guys and to all of you about this topic. And really why I love this, and I know that some of you are new out there, I got to meet some of you this morning. I love this topic because it shows like the heartbeat of Whitewater. It's like why I fell in love with Whitewater. It's why I wanted to be a part of this team. So I hope that by the end of this today, you're gonna be like, I'm, I'm for that too. But before we really dive in, I wanna share just a little bit about me. I know may, maybe some of you know me, but there's a little bit maybe you don't know that I would love to share with you. This month, today's August, which I love the start of a new month. Today's August and this month, six years ago, I joined this team. Yeah, that's cool. But before, before my time here at Whitewater, I actually worked in an inner city school in Cincinnati. I went to college in Cincinnati and got a job at an inner city school, and I never saw that coming. Um, the teaching part, yes, I love to teach. The inner city part, no. Indiana girl, born and raised, still live there. I feel like once, I just feel like around here you don't leave where you grew up. But anyway, I did not see myself working in the inner city. In fact, I remember saying to my girlfriends in college, I'm not working down there. But that inner city school, that job is one of, if not the reason I choose every day to serve Jesus and to be a part of this ministry. That school was called Euler or Euler Learning Community Learning Center. They were the hat makers, that was their mascot, on Hatmaker Street in Lower Price Hill. That's where I spent five years teaching preschool. <laughs> Euler, so first of all, a, a church knit those hats for them. How precious is that? So I can't look at them too long because I love them. But Euler serves preschoolers up to 12th grade students and they are the region's largest community learning center. And it's a little bit different than a school because this learning center provided not only your normal school, they had an early learning center, which is where I worked. They had a dental and a vision clinic. It really was this hub where they took care of the whole child. And maybe some of you have heard of Euler, maybe your businesses serve there or donate their time, all of those things. Um, Euler was this community anchor. If you go to Lower Price Hill, you'll see this big building right in the middle. That's Euler. It was my time at Euler that, well, first of all, that's where I met my husband. That was super fun. We taught there together. That was him in one of the pictures with the kids. But it was my time at Euler that really opened my eyes and Rob's eyes to the families and the kids who struggled differently than we ever struggled. A large piece of that struggle was a lack of education due to maybe even the desire to have an education, uh, but lack of relational connection and guidance, a lack of resources. Many of the parents uh, who were in the picture didn't have the tools and the resources needed to teach or to raise their kids. They didn't have internet, proper clothing, food, you name it. But some of the parents weren't even in the picture. So my role as teacher, preschool teacher, some of you teach preschool, you know we are to teach colors and shapes and how to be a good friend. But I spent my time picking lice out of hair, teaching them how to wash their hands and why it's important that we eat vegetables and why we wanna take care of our bodies, why we probably should wear shoes to school. Some of the struggles at Euler, 
I can remember children being at the door, waiting for us to get there, and we got there at 6 a.m., waiting for us because we were how they were gonna eat breakfast. We were probably the last meal that they just had, or that they had. They'd be waiting for us, we'd be excited to see them, but we might realize that legend, that was his name, he didn't have shoes, so I could not let him stay. I just, I couldn't let him stay. So that broke my heart. If I didn't have the shoes, because sometimes we did, but if we didn't have the shoes, he wasn't allowed to stay. So then he wasn't allowed to eat that day or he didn't have the opportunity to eat. All of the curriculum and lesson plans we had ready for that little guy, out the window. We'd spend, we'd, our center would close at 6 p.m. and we'd be there later because someone didn't come to pick them up. It would get past that 30 minute mark where we were supposed to call CPS. Maybe you don't know what that stands for. That's Child Protective Services. We'd have to call and say this child never got picked up. Or maybe we'd wait and the parent would come. They would not be fit to take their child home. That's where I would have to break rules and maybe drive them home or walk them home. Sorry, I know I shouldn't do that. Uh, but anyway, my heart broke for these kids and for these families. And their real the reality of their lives was so different than mine. I remember driving home to my beautiful Indiana town and thinking like, why do I get this nice neighborhood? Why do I get this green grass? They don't have green grass there. Why do I get to just sit back, eat my dinner while I watch TV comfortably? I also spent a lot of time in that school rubbing shoulders with teachers and other school staff. And I saw then too the struggles that they had because caring for these families, being in this type of work environment was hard. I eventually left that school to be a part of this team full time. And if I'm honest, that wasn't like a, something I was super thrilled about. I went back and forth. And if you know me, I still talk about Euler all the time. But I just really loved the work that was going on in that school and in that community. I felt like I was actually making a difference. I saw needs, I was able to help meet those needs. The needs were just so in my face. And I thought, why would I leave this? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a light to these people. Why would I leave that and come to a church that has it all together? I felt like I was making a safe and comfortable move. I was about to start my family. It didn't take me long though, once I started being a part of this community to realize that Cleves and the schools in our area have some of those same needs as the school that I left. Whitewater, I realized in my time here that your heart broke and breaks the same way that my heart breaks for little ones, for those who just don't have what they need to succeed. And many of you here long before me, I mean, I look up to y'all. You guys were doing that work, that hard, beautiful, heartbreaking, yet rewarding, that I wanna get up the next day kind of Jesus work. You all had a desire and you have a desire to help those who are down on their luck and on their hope. You wanna support and resource children and their families so that they can have a better life, which is why we're involved in our area schools and why we believe in the mission to be for our schools. So this is why I love you. This is why I choose to still be a part of this team. This is why I get up here most Sundays with excitement and joy because many of you are reflecting Jesus. You're choosing daily to follow him, to die to yourself. And because of that, kids matter to you because kids matter to Jesus. Meeting needs of kids and their families matter to you because they matter to Jesus. 
If you have your Bible, I just want to take it to maybe something that's familiar to some of you, maybe not, but to all of you, but I want to you to go to Matthew 18, and in that little Bible, this little Bible, it will tell you what Jesus says about kids. Matthew 18, let's say verse 3. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself is like this child, like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Flip over to chapter 19, verse 14. Let the little children come to me and don't hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Kids are a big deal to Jesus. So what does being for our schools have to do with it? Well, we are in Solve 7, and John mentioned our charge today is to educate the student, to care for the student, to care for, let's see, the Highlander. Where are my Highlanders at? Those who go to Oak Hills. I saw one clap back there. <laughs> well, Taylor students, our Yellow Jackets. Yes. All of our students in Lawrenceburg, the Tigers, that's where I live. Yes, buddy. Uh, Cole Rain, our Cardinals. I mean, Pat, you still love Co Cole Rain, right? And Harrison, our Wildcats. Yes. <laughs> we want to care for them. But we also, we kind of need to step back just a minute and acknowledge the fact that a lack of resources, a lack of having what we need can hinder an education. And a lack of education then hinders the potential success of a child or a student. And as we collectively follow Jesus, we can't be okay with this. We cannot be okay with a lack of resources hindering an education, and we can't be okay with kids in our area, our neighbors, having a lack of education. And I, I just wanna stop and kind of mention that I'm not talking about just those kids. Because I'm sure right now, maybe you're thinking, oh, I know a neighborhood, much like maybe Lower Price Hill, where they don't have everything they need. I can help them. And, oh, I, I can help that kid. But I'm not talking about just the kids who have visible, physical needs that need to be met. I'm talking about the normal kids, too. The kids who seem to have it all together. The kids who live in the nice neighborhood because those kids still have needs too. Emotional needs, social needs, physical needs. The reality is that kids who are comfortably resourced have just learned how to hide their needs a little bit better than those who don't have that privilege. And I was that kid. I was the kid who had it all together. I had a great family. I lived in a great neighborhood cool school. I went to East Central. Anybody out there? Oh, yeah. So I was that kid. But I had some things in my story, some ups and downs, that if I didn't have loving adults, maybe some of you in this space, if I didn't have you all pouring into me and caring for me, I wouldn't be the woman I am today. So it's not just those kids. As I look at all of you, I know that schools are important to you. I've spent enough time with you to know that. I don't think I need to convince anyone of that, but if I do, hopefully by the end of this, you, you'll, you'll care a little bit more about your school. But even if you don't care, or even if you don't have kids in schools, we need to just face the facts and realize that we all spend a lot of time at school, don't we? Like that's where we are. So some of you graduated years and years ago, and you still go to the football games. Anybody out there? <laughs> you bleed your school colors. Mine was black and red. You live vicariously through your children on Friday night as they play football and cheer. <laughs> we all spend a lot of time within our schools. And I do love that. I don't want to rag on you all for like loving your schools, because I do too. I think school pride is fun. And I love all of our schools represented. You've probably seen me wear your school t-shirt and I don't even go there. 
I have a shirt for every school represented in this church because I am for our schools. But if you have kids in school, or maybe you don't, but you know this to be true, outside of the academic hours, we are at school all the time. Sports, committees, clubs. I know you have something every night of the week involved with your school. you got to get your kid to. I know all of you are like gearing up for that. Which is why Whitewater, a team of us got together and decided we really want our people to love our neighbors. How can we help them remember to do so? How can we help them remember to be like Jesus? So we came up with the whole For Our Schools slogan a few years ago, something that you all are already used to. We knew you would rally behind that. But to be for our school means we pray for, we support, we're available to walk alongside of and to encourage those. Really, to be for our school means that we're just meeting Jesus at school because he's already there. He's already with our students at school. So we're just deciding to partner with him on that mission to be for our schools. Because students need to be empowered, teachers need to be equipped, and families need encouragement. At the end of the day, students, teachers, families, they need Jesus. And with Jesus at work in many of you, you have hope and help to offer. So I love school. It's the mo- I wish I was, I'm about to go back to school because I love it. it. It's the most wonderful time of the year, if you ask me. And school is just around the corner. Seriously, for some of our districts, you start this week. For others, you start in a couple weeks. So I believe we have the perfect opportunity right at our fingertips to love one another radically, to love like Jesus this school year. We're going to come alongside educators and leaders in our schools to equip, encourage, and empower the student of all ages. School year is coming quickly. And I want us all to enjoy the hopeful feeling of a fresh start. And I know if you're some of your parents, you're like, yeah, because they're going back. Some of you kids are excited to go back. A fresh start, new opportunities. But I want us to just slow down, realize the reality that the season ahead, not everyone is looking forward to. The start of a school year is a burden, a heavy weight. They aren't prepared to purchase those new Nikes or the trendy new clothes. They aren't ready to take on that next grade level to go from middle school to high school. They're not ready to join that team that maybe you have asked them to join. And for some, the school year ahead is a burden because they're not educationally ready. A burden because they don't have the needed tools to succeed. A burden because it's so stressful to start back up in the grind. Parents and grandparents, I just want to remind you that your kids really want to please you. The students living in your home want to get it right for you. They have a lot of pressure to please you. And some kids are just dreading going back to school. Anxiety, nerves. So just remember that. Kids, students, I'll remind you too that your parents, not, are, not all of them are just eager to start. For some of them, starting school is a stressor for them too. Like me, I'm one of those parents that is a little on edge this year. If you know me at all, you've probably know my mini me, right? If you don't, let me introduce you to my, the three-year-old version of myself. Her name is Navy. Navy is starting preschool this fall. Yes, it is super exciting. It is. All things. (laughs) And I am now that parent, you know, give her new clothes, get her hair cut, let her feel like she's the real deal. We are going to take off that day of work, you know, because August 17th is now a national holiday because Navy's going to school. I'll have probably just a caravan of people who want to see her walk into that building with her backpack that's bigger than her. I am now that parent. I realize that. And I, I'm, I was pumped for this. 
like when she was a little tiny baby. My husband and I would talk about, oh, I can't wait for her to go to school. She's going to be so cute. It's going to be so fun dropping her off and picking her up and helping her with homework and all of that. But it changed for me. And maybe some of you know where I'm going. But it doesn't seem as fun or exciting anymore because my partner's not here anymore. And that was something that we were planning, something that we were laughing about, something that we were going to do together. And now it's just on me. I had the stack of paperwork I had to fill out. I avoided it because I knew it's going to say, what's mom's name? What's dad's name? So I put it off for a while. But I finally did it the other day. Sat down, filled it out, wrote down, relived all of the pain, dates, what you can expect about Navy. She's going to talk about her dad who lives in heaven. We're okay with that. I hope she talks to you about Jesus. I mean, it was really beautiful to be able to write all of this stuff down. And I would be lying to you if I acted like that experience was all dreadful. There was hard parts, but there was also a lot of light and a lot of hope. As I got to write down who was allowed to pick up Navy from preschool, I needed a whole nother piece of paper. <laughs> they're probably, they're going to get this and be like, this woman, oh my goodness. But getting to write some of you down, and getting to say that Navy, they asked who will Navy mention who is a part of her life. Oh, the list went on and on and on. That gave me such hope to get to share the army of people that are coming alongside Navy. And, you know, I just want to encourage you all. Can we be that army for other kids too? Not just my kid, but can we be that army for other kids too? I'm not the only single mom out there. So just know that yes, school is fun and it's exciting to start, but a lot of families are a little on edge. Not to mention the fact that we are now living in a post-COVID or just a COVID world. All of these burdens are now heavier. I have a friend, she works in a local school, I won't mention her name, but she wrote this. We have many students walking into our building that haven't walked into a building in a year and a half. They were sitting at home, learning from home, and you can imagine the quality of that. Quality instruction comes from a teacher, not a computer screen. So, we always do, but this year we will have significant academic and social gaps. Those same students who were home learning were also not engaging with other humans, and there is as much a social curriculum as there is an academic one. Mental health concerns have increased with COVID as well. Depression, anxiety, you name it. COVID also brought along financial stressors for families. Sending kids back to school means school fees, school supplies, you name it. So we get to help alleviate some of that weight, some of that burden, especially if we believe in our command to love our neighbors as ourselves. You know, in Galatians 6.2, you can read this along with me. It says, carry one another's burdens in this way. When we do this, we will fulfill the law. And let me tell you what that law is. That's in Matthew 22, 37. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and greatest command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm so excited to get to do this with you all. So I just want to encourage you and remind you to love those that you're constantly around. I believe you want to follow and fulfill the law that Jesus has given us. I know you want to love your neighbors as yourself. So this is just a great way that we get to do it. So maybe you're wondering, well, what does this look like? We have a lot of different ages and stages represented in this room. I think this looks like we equip our students. We give them the tools they need to succeed. Think about what you need to succeed. Clothing, shoes, supplies, food. They need those things. Maybe they need a loving adult who will walk alongside of them, who let them, you know, who 
you invite a loving adult in and those loving adults pour into you and walk alongside of you in a season that they've walked before, maybe that's what they need. As a body this summer of love, we have rallied to come along students. And maybe some of you who are new here, you can see that in the halls. We gathered supplies and backpacks and shoes. And with your generosity, not only students will be blessed, but teachers will be blessed as well. We equip teachers so they can then resource the child. This summer, many of you participated in Meet Up, Eat Up, Read Up, which is a summer program where we partner with Southwest Local School District to come alongside children and provide them a fun and safe learning environment. Many of you spent time too here every Wednesday being a part of picnics in the parking lot. We fed kids from our school districts, let them have a little bit of hope and joy this summer. I just want to encourage you that it doesn't end here. It doesn't just stop with the summer of love. We equip students and we encourage them. This looks like showing up, parents. This looks like showing up for the kids in your home, the students actually living under your roof, being available to them. Or maybe all of the students that you rub shoulders with at games. Some of you coach, some of you are at games weekly. This looks like encouraging those kids too cheering them on as they start the new year, walking through this season with them, sharing hope. Some of you probably don't have kids at home anymore, but you find yourselves with time. You find yourselves with time and with a willing and dedicated heart to join in on this mission. I would love to invite you into some of the opportunities that we have. I'll share a few, but I just want to let you know, if you find yourself in that seat, please reach out to me. I would love to equip you by giving you something that you could come alongside of and do in our schools. But before I tell you about those opportunities, I want to explain to you something, that this church has unreal favor from God with our surrounding school districts. I want you to know that there are people who want to be a part of our church because the way we love and live within our schools And we actually have people who are sitting here today because we loved on their school or because we are a part of their school. And I want want to say this again, this is favor from God. This isn't beautiful white water and everything they did. It was Jesus and us partnering with Jesus that we have this unreal favor. Some of the examples of some of these things when I say favor, I'll, I'll share a few. We are entrusted to take a quality worship experience to schools. There's something that we call Lightning Squad, where it's an after-school program for kids to hear about Jesus and spend their time with loving adults. This program is designed to equip kids to know the light of Jesus, to know him, and then also to be that in their school. You guys can come alongside of us as we do that. Our friends at Three Rivers, they know we are a resource to them. They often use our building for things. And this summer, they used our building for a girls' retreat. It was called Brave Girl. It was a leadership retreat where um, Three Rivers counselors came, Whitewater staff came alongside of them, and we just poured into the young girls. We also have relationships with school leaders, with superintendents and teachers like I've never seen. Maybe some of you are sitting here today or watching with us online. You all have been the hands and feet of Jesus in in our area schools, and God has blessed that. It's really unique. I've been a part of a few other churches, and this is unique. So I would encourage you to double down on that and to not lose sight of, of that special gift. Equipping And encouraging students is really important, but we just need to remember to encourage and equip those teachers as well, those who are in the thick of it, in the trenches every day. My friend, she wrote, pray for us. Educators are not just educating students anymore. They are now some of the first responders to mental health struggles, which are way more common than not. On top of that, these folks have their own mental health issues. So helping these children is sometimes a trigger. She also said we can support her, support her and her staff, as the amount of money that they have to dish out to their students is crazy. 
If middle schoolers don't have enough money to eat lunch, they're not allowed to charge their accounts like you can in elementary school. So this leader gathers teachers and they spend their own money to feed children because they refuse to let kids not eat. And they can't do this alone. I know this. I was in their seat once. It's devastating, it's frustrating, it's difficult, and it's lonely to try to handle these situations on your own. We can help. We want to equip, encourage, so that we will have empowered students. That's our end goal, an empowered student, an empowered leader. That's what our youth ministry team here at Whitewater is striving for too. Everything they do is to empower the student. Those of you who have an empty nest, maybe don't know what youth ministry is around here. Those of you who have just a little kid like me and we spend our time in Harbor Town, I wanna introduce you to some of our incredible youth ministry team members who I personally am learning from weekly. These leaders are with our students week in and week out. So it's really important that we lift them up and encourage them. But check out this video recapping some past events this year and see what a difference showing up can make. Been here for a year and a half. Uh, and that is kind of concept, big show is been here for a year and a half man i was started here at whitewater right before covid uh and so since last march has been the the craziness of student culture isolation loneliness and big chill kind of came out of that thought that dream of of man how do we keep kids connected how do we keep students connected how do we give them community The team was like, oh, maybe we could, you know, uh, put something somewhere. Or maybe we could, you know, and someone just said, maybe we could burn something. And I was like, yeah, students in fire. That's, that's awesome. Let's go there. Hey, uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on this, on this text that Alex just showed me from Crossroads. She said a girl texted her. She said, hey, the friend I brought to church the past two nights said that the past two nights has changed his mind about everything. He said that on the paper on Saturday, he put non-believer, and he feels like when that was burned, it was burned out of him, and now he wants to be a Christian and follower of God. I went into Saturday night with a posture of somebody in this room is the teenage version of me. My world collapsed when I was a teenager. And I didn't have any sort of spiritual foundation to hold me up. And so I went into that night saying if I could just reach one, so they wouldn't have to go down the path that I went down. You never know how God's gonna work and, it, and, and it's for him and in his time and for his glory. And, and, and as a communicator, any, anybody who gets on a platform for the king, like you, you don't know how he's gonna use you. And then a lot of times you never get to hear if he does. It's empowering to remember that Show up. Take every moment that you have and use it to its fullest potential. Because you never know when that moment is that God's gonna drop and say, I'm using you right now to change somebody else's life. I think our team did great at setting the stage and, and the environment and just letting God run at what he wanted to. And we were just there. I mean, like I literally felt like all four days we were just we were just watching. I, I felt we were just watching what God was doing. Student decides not to commit suicide. Student decides to give his life to Christ or her life. Student decides that she like now's the time she wants to get baptized. All I mean, all of that, man. Um, I don't know how that isn't. Like, how do we not do it again? How do how do we not capitalize on that? 
on that moment or that movement that God is creating. Kind of our goal for Tribes was just to like bring another aspect in to like Whitewater Youth to where students didn't feel like so pressured to just bring their friends to like normal church. It was kind of like, here, let's build this community. Let's bring you in and then like, and then after this, we'll push you towards that like Sunday service. The way the students got involved, they were just so excited and they would have fun during the games and all that. But at the end of Tribes, every single Sunday, we would do the scoreboard and show them like where they were. And just to watch the excitement <laughs> from that was hilarious. It was so much fun. It was like, they kind of get to watch like why they were doing it and kind of see their scores. This year has been uh, insane and we just needed to have a time where our students could focus on God and recommit their lives to what he's doing, where he's working. Uh, and so we had a ton of students recommit their lives to Christ, their, their mission, their vision, uh, recommit for our church of God, show us where we want our church to go, which is awesome. Uh, we had some students accept Christ for the first time, which is awesome, what a win. And we had some students who were like, hey, I wanna do ministry, which is cool. So man, right now we are just walking through life with our students, uh, walking through their call, walk through the messiness, um, and just try to figure out where God's placing them and where they're moving us. And uh, that is why we are like, hey, Whitewater Youth is gonna change the landscape of our church, our city. Um, and we're just trying to empower our students and encourage them to go run after the things that God has put on their heart, so. Yes. So John said, show up. God could be using you to change the life of a student. I love Reed. He's our youth pastor. He said, walk through life with our students. Walk through the messiness. Because the, the reality is they're going to walk through the messiness. It's just whether you're there with them or not. So can you equip and encourage your students in the schools and in the spheres of influence that you have? Can you be for the one that may be for the one what you needed when you were a student? Today, this is where it gets fun. Today, we get the chance to equip and encourage those in our schools. So I'm asking that if you're joining us on campus, that you stick around for a little bit. We're gonna pack some gifts for teachers and for students, it's just a really practical way to equip and encourage. So let me run through those options for you real quick. We're gonna have a toiletry pack, kids need essentials. So we're going to pack those for our friends in our backpack club. We're also going to pack bags for nurses so they can have those on hand as well. Another option is going to be a back to school snack pack for Northwest because kids need snacks. I don't know if you've caught on to that yet. It's an easy way to show kids that we love them and that Jesus loves them. Our last option will be a teacher gift pack. We need to rally around some of you in this room. You lovely teachers, we need to let you know that we care for you and we have your back. So stick around, because y'all, this is how we can lean in and be like Jesus, to help educate the student. Educate and remind the student that they matter, that teachers matter, and parents, even you matter. Students, teachers, and families, they all have needs and real struggles. We know this. So, Solve 7, by us removing some of the physical barriers, by alleviating some of the burden and pressure, we're setting those kids up for success. We're opening up their minds and their hearts to all of the possibilities and all of the potential that can be unleashed. So before we go serve, before we go have a party, I just want us to do something real quick. And it might be a little uncomfortable, so I, I guess I'm sorry but I want us to just pray. So kids, if you are a kid or a student going back to school, preschool up to grad school, I don't care, would you stand? Go on, lead the way, front row. My students, your church family has your back, okay? And we declare this over you. 
Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Parents, stay standing, kids and students. Parents, would you stand up? Maybe you're not a parent, but you're a guardian and someone in your home is going to school. Ooh, that's me. I'm asking that you maybe get a little more patience, a little more love, a little more grace for your students. You know, that's what we need from our Heavenly Father, grace, patience, and love. So this is for you and for me. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Stay standing, students and parents. If you work in a school, would you stand up? You teach, you work in the office, you help out around the building, would you stand? Our prayer for you is great wisdom this year. As you make tough calls, as you lead and as you love our students and us parents, we pray for great wisdom. Would the rest of you stand? And let's join these folks. Extend a hand if you feel comfortable doing so. Put your arm around somebody if they're near you, but let's just pray and lift up these lovelies to our Lord. God, I'm so thankful that we, this body of believers that we call a church, that we have the opportunity to cheer on our students and our kids. God, I'm so thankful that you have given us tools and resources and a mind, Lord, to be creative, to, to love and serve. And God, I ask that you just remove any anxiety or fear that might be felt and that you would just give everyone just a bold spirit, a bold Jesus heart, whether you're going into the school to lead, to serve, to learn, or whether or not you're not, <laughs> and you're gonna go into those schools and love and be like Jesus, a bold Jesus love. That's what I ask for for my friends here today. So Lord, we ask for your favor to be upon us. We love you, Lord. Amen.